Hello my wonderful, beautiful friends, guys, welcome back to our slash entitled people, where people seem to think the world revolves around them and nobody matters. And in today's episode guys, we've got road raging Karens, people blocking driveways, Karens crying because they're forced to go to work. My goodness, I hope you guys enjoy the stories, don't shake your heads too much, and as always, you can send or link your stories to this email right here, we're diving in. Okay, so I work at a game store, and the other day, a woman called and asked if we had a specific game available. I was dealing with a customer at the register, so I told her I could check for her soon, and I put her on hold. Out of nowhere, there's a rush of people, and I forget she's on hold. About 10 minutes after she called, the rush is over, and she calls again screaming at me. The woman says, I was on hold for 20 minutes, I'm the customer, and you forgot about me. Now hearing her say that, I was slightly embarrassed, so I say, oh, I'm very sorry ma'am, it did get quite busy, and I forgot I had you on hold. Okay, let me check on the game for you. At that she says, I don't care about that anymore, what you did was very, very rude. At this point, I'm kind of at a loss, since I've already apologized to her and I'm not sure what else to say. So I stammer and say, uh, I'm, I'm sorry ma'am, it was an accident, is there anything else I can do for you? To which the Karen responds, what? You want to ask me a question so you can put me on hold and never come back again? I don't think so. And with that, I hear a click. Now that was a rather strange interaction, although not the strangest, and I thought it was over. Until about 30 minutes later, when she comes into the store and she was fuming. Karen marches up to me and says, Are you the guy I was talking to on the phone earlier that forgot about me? I say to her, uh, yes, how can I help you? She then says, look at me, I was the one you forgot about on the phone. Now, a thing about me is I'm a bit socially awkward. In certain situations, I don't know what to do. It doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it happens hard. I'm trying to process what's happening, so the woman calls on the phone, I put her on hold, accidentally forgot about her, she became upset, didn't want help anymore, and now she's in the store. I figure the woman's trying to be funny, and she did in fact now want the game she'd inquired about. It was the most logical possibility. So I say to her, oh, I'm sorry again about that, it was really busy when you called and things got a little bit out of hand, but I think we have the game for you. And her response was, I don't care about the damn game. I wanted to come confront you for what you did. I want you fired. Okay, and now I'm getting nervous. Fired I get, but she wants to confront me like she wants to fight me or something. Honestly, I had no idea why she was there if she didn't want to buy something. So I say, uh, I I'm sorry. Karen says, you heard me. You were rude to me on the phone and I want to speak to your manager about your job. I'm a part of the managerial team, but not the actual manager. The manager was right beside me though, and she comes over when she hears, saying, Hi ma'am, I'm the manager, how can I help you? Karen says, Your employee here was rude to me on the phone. I can see my manager's also confused, and she says, Oh yes, I'm sorry about that, I was here and it did get pretty busy. He was actually pretty embarrassed forgetting about you, but I reprimanded him for it. She hadn't, but I could tell that this woman wasn't going to be satisfied by anything less. Little did we know, Karen would say, Well, what good does that do to me? I want to see you yell at him right now, right in front of me. He needs to get in trouble, she demanded. I really thought this was a joke. She actually wanted to see me get yelled at, because I accidentally forgot about her on the phone. My manager says to her, I'm sorry ma'am, but I'm not gonna do that. He apologized to you, and I've apologized to you. It was an accident, and I heard him still trying to help you. What else can we help you with today? At that, Karen looked defeated. She says, nothing. I just wanted to come here to give you a piece of my mind. She then turned and left in a huff. My manager and I look at each other, and we kind of laughed while another customer makes fun of her as soon as she left saying, Oh, you were rude to me, I want you to yell at him. What a crazy witch. Yeah, that Karen is a good reason I'll never ever work in retail, guys. And what I find the most disturbing in all this is she used so much of her time to try to ruin Opie's life over a little mistake that he and the manager already apologized for. Some people really need to get a life, guys, and realize it's not all about them. Wild. Okay, so this just happened yesterday, and I thought I would share this ridiculous entitlement. So I work as a parcel courier. 
and I was working my roots as normal, and I was about an hour into my roots, and I was in a particularly good mood, until I reached an intersection with Road Karen. So for context, the street I was on is very odd. On one side of the road, it's residential houses, some buildings with businesses and apartments on the top floors, and on the other side was a state highway that has a lot of traffic coming off the highway, as well as cars coming from other streets to get on said highway, since it's one of the only points of entry, unless you want to take a detour. It's a big pain in the ass, and the infrastructure is not ideal, but everyone knows what to do to ensure a quick and effective commute. So the intersection I mentioned is somewhat narrow due to all the snow that's accumulated. Road Karen is on the left turn lane at the front of traffic, and a semi-truck is making a left turn onto the street since he wanted to get on the highway, and this is where the entitlement starts. As I've said, the road is narrow due to the snow, and the semi couldn't turn unless Road Karen reversed. Now I did see this coming, but the semi-truck driver made the mistake of thinking that this piece of crap would do anything a rational person would do, and decided to make his turn. As expected, he couldn't complete his turn due to the Karen mobile. Every driver behind Karen starts reversing because, you know, people got places to be and this semi's gotta go. Now I kid you not, there's about 15 feet of space for her to back up to allow this gentleman and his giant semi to complete the turn. So what does Karen do? You guessed it, she does nothing. She just sits there, and 15 seconds pass, and the semi-truck driver gives her a couple of honks because at this point, it's too late for him to do anything. So now, the semi and his trailer are blocking the intersection and the traffic starting to build up from people coming off the highway, and people trying to get on the highway. The guy honks his horn longer this time, and this degenerate piece of crap puts her car in park, and she goes on her phone to call someone. So I get to the front, and the light turns red, leaving me side by side to Karen. I get out of my van pissed, as I see her tapping away on her phone and knock on her window. She looks up at me, and I yell and gesture to let her know that she has to back up, as the truck has nowhere to go. That's when Karen keeps her windows rolled up, and she starts saying, I was here first, pointing and gesturing angrily to the ground. At this point, the semi-driver starts inching closer and closer to her to scare her to back off, but she doesn't budge. At this point, I yell at her saying, He can't go anywhere, you have to back up, traffic is completely completely blocked off here because of you. She ignores me, and I look up to the semi-driver, throw my hands up, and shrug my shoulders to let him know that that woman ain't moving. The light turns green, and I went on my way. I made a few more deliveries, and about 10-15 to minutes have passed since the start of the whole debacle, and I went back to the street on the opposite side of the clog to see if it was resolved. And yup, you guessed it, traffic was completely clogged. I didn't even see the highway, but I'd assume there was a line of cars trying to exit on that street. Unfortunately, I didn't stick around, and I went back on my route, so I didn't see the conclusion to the idiotic solution. But I'm guessing the semi-truck driver called the cops. I wish I had a left turn at that intersection, just to see the cops chew that road Karen out. Please don't be like this person, and consider every other person on the road. It's been over 24 hours since this happened, and I'm still fuming and baffled. Thank you guys for reading my rant. Okay, so reading this post, guys, I was reminded of this exact same situation I was in. So I used to work with someone who did this exact thing that Karen did. Like, the idiot drove me home from work one day, like 10 years ago, and he stood his ground against the semi trying to make a left turn. So yeah, I was in the passenger seat, and I saw that there was no way the semi was going to clear without hitting him. So I was like, man, you gotta back up, the back of his trailer is gonna clip you. And the guy was like, bro, if he hits me, I'll just contact his company and they'll have to pay. It's his job to get around me. So yeah, crappy people like that do exist to inconvenience others. And it's terrible. And just to add, he's the guy that came to work late every day sneaking in the back door, so you can already tell what type of person he is. Just an upstanding citizen. And while we're on the topic of Karens in cars, guys, listen to this wild one. I will never forget this day. It happened years ago. I was traveling home to my childhood home after work and school. The freeway exit at my house is a major hub and was built in such a way that it causes a lot of accidents. If you make a right turn, there's immediately another set of lights for another multiple lane intersection. The lights are supposed to be timed together, but they're often very, very off. 
So the first light's green and the second is red, and it can only accommodate six vehicles before the seventh is sticking into the intersection and blocking a lot of traffic. People do this all the time, and then there's an entire blockade, because idiots can't remember that you aren't legally allowed to block intersections. So as usual, the light turns green, the cars go, the second light is red, and it fills up. I'm stuck at the first light, I'm not going because I can't fit my car there, and I'll fully be blocking traffic if the light turns red. At this point, I hear honking, but I don't care, I legally can't go. And that's when this car pulls out beside me, and she's in the lane that's meant for turning left, so she's on my left. At first, she rolls her window down, and now I'm thinking, maybe there's something wrong, so I roll my window down. And that's when the Karen says, do you want me to give you a beatdown, bitch? And I'm saying, what? I was so confused, I've never met this woman in my life, like, what have I done to you? The woman continues on and says, you're out here blocking the road like an idiot, I should effing beat your dumb ass. So while she's yelling at me, there's now literally cars all down the left side who can't make a left turn, because this Karen has her car parked across two turning lanes to get mad at me for not disobeying traffic laws. Now the lights turn green, and I'm just like, no, I'm not dealing with this, and I drive off. I'm also having a mild panic attack because she's threatening to find me and basically murder me in very colorful language as I drive off. So I pull off into a parking lot with a lot of cars. I'm at the grocery store, so I can slow my breathing and my heart rate, and I look around, and guess who? She's following me. I then hide down in my car, and she's driving up and down the aisles like a freaking psycho, looking for me. The woman is nearly hitting other vehicles and people walking, until she gives up and leaves. I never thought in my life that a Karen would get upset about not being able to move her car up like one car length, to the point that it would want to make her commit murder. So yeah, we've all seen those videos on the internet, right? Like, road ragers are no joke, guys. People are getting hurt, or even worse, killed every single day by psycho road ragers like Karen. And I also want to say that people who follow others are stupid to assume that the person they're following or threatening isn't carrying a weapon of some sort and ready to defend themselves. Alright, so I woke up this morning at about 7am, checking my outside cameras as usual, when I'm greeted by the infuriating sight of a newish, grey Toyota sedan firmly blocking my driveway. So I go outside to see if the person was inside and about to move, so I hopefully wouldn't have to escalate things. They were predictably not inside, so that's when I called parking enforcement. It took them an hour and a half to get there, but apparently the person who blocked me in was in no rush to get back to their car. Thankfully, the parking enforcement officer was very nice. My mother and I handed over our IDs to prove we lived here, and he asked us if we wanted the car towed. I told him, whatever gets it out of here. He then told us to have a good day, and we went back inside to watch the show from my security camera. The tow truck guy shows up, and him and the officer conversate. Now, with the unholy racket that the tow truck guy was making, and the very loud conversation they were having, Plus the alarm going off, you'd think this person would come skipping down the street any minute, right? But no, it wasn't until the tow truck guy and the officer were about to drive away that this older woman in her late 50s makes her way down the street, seemingly no concern on her part, asking why her car was getting towed. Now, the way she was gesturing and pointing wildly, you'd think we did her a serious wrong. The officer very nicely pointed out, no less than five times, that she was blocking our driveway. The woman seemed to not comprehend that it was against the law, even after he showed the pictures he took of her car while he literally spelled it out for her. You could hear him saying, here's the driveway, here's the property, here's your car, you're blocking it. She then tried to argue with the tow truck guy about getting her car back, but he did the shrug that clearly said, well, it's on the hook already, so you'll have to pay. So she hands her card over while throwing our house dirty looks, like she expected us to come out and berate her. But no need, these guys were doing a bang up job already. But the kicker is, she didn't even have the car keys. The woman apparently handed them off to a relative, so she was obviously planning on leaving the car there all day. So she had to go all the way back to her house, which was pretty far down the street, because it took her a while to get a spare key. In that time, an extremely nosy neighbor of ours across the street decided to stick her nose where it didn't belong, asking the men why the woman was getting towed, even though she saw her blocking us. 
That's when the tow truck guy literally gestures at our driveway saying they couldn't even get out with that incredulous tone of voice that you only reserve for the slow-witted ones. In the end, she had to pay to get her car back. Her and the neighbor had a long talk, gesturing in our direction while conversing in snooty voices like anybody gave a damn. And the best part was, she got to take home a nice present in the form of a ticket on her windshield. I hope for her sake that she not only learns not to do that stupid stuff again, but that fines aren't doubled on holidays. Oh well. Guys, the entitled stupidity of people never ceases to amaze me. And hopefully it's the last time she does something like that again. And seriously, I just don't get how some people can just be in their own little world and seem to think, oh, it's okay if I park here. The people living here probably don't need to get in and out of their driveway. I'll just park here the whole day. Like, it's absurd. So I was the director of sales ops for a $40 million a year software company. Karen was on my team. We processed purchase orders. Karen had a small vehicle accident that put her in a neck brace. She also needed once weekly physical therapy appointments and she had some restrictions on duties, all of which I accommodated, no issue. Now, despite meeting her needs, Karen decided that coming into work was optional. HR noticed that she was repeatedly absent from work three to four days at a time, multiple weeks in a row. Now, they didn't give me details, but they told me documentation from her doctor did not justify all these absences. To make matters worse, Karen would never give notice that she was going to be gone. Sometimes, she would just no-show without calling, nor indicate how long she would be gone. HR eventually told Karen that she either needed to attend work more regularly or get a doctor to sign off on short-term disability. This worked for me. I would rather Karen take extended time off than be absent frequently with no warning. Karen's original doctor would not document a need for disability, so she found a doctor who would. She then bragged to the team that she found a doctor that would sign off on anything. So Karen went on disability, and I was able to get a temp cover her until she returned. Co-workers then told me that Karen was going to clubs and dancing as such, but I didn't care. That was between her and HR. For now at least, the work was getting done. The time period of Karen's short-term disability eventually expired. At this point, she either had to come back to work or go on long-term disability so I could replace her permanently. Karen's signed anything doctor would not give her documentation for long-term disability, so Karen grudgingly came back to work. She quickly went back to being absent all the time. She also refused to even do the basic duties of her job. And that's when I went to HR and told them that things were not working out and I wanted to replace her. They were on board with this plan. HR then brings in Karen for the talk. But Karen flipped out and said that she would sue if they did anything to her. Suddenly, HR was not on board. It didn't matter that Karen really had no legal standing, but just the threat of a lawsuit made HR decide that it was more important to make Karen happy than to let me have a functional department. In one instance, I asked Karen to do a purchase order review, and she complained to HR about me bossing her around. I am her boss. HR then told me that I could no longer give assignments or work duties to Karen. This went on for months, and Karen quickly learned that she could complain to HR about anything, and she would get her way, and she became a spoiled brat. You would not believe the accommodation she was given. Meanwhile, she gave no effort to hide that she was not really injured anymore. She was barely coming into work, but still getting paid. She even encouraged other team members to take advantage of this loophole she found. Then one day during month and crunch, Karen had not come in or called. So I called and asked if she planned to work that day. It was one simple question, carefully crafted to be neutral in tone. She told HR that I harassed her with my phone call and I got written up. So I immediately put in my two-week notice. I'm not going to deal with my career being effed by a woman who works maybe six days a month, especially when I give 60 to 70 hours a week to the company. With me suddenly gone, the sales operations fell apart. Purchase orders were not going through. And to address this emergency, a company senior VP took over sales operations until my replacement could be found. Now, HR was certainly not going to tell this guy that he couldn't give Karen duties, so Karen had to actually work. About a month after I quit, Karen got my home number and she called me, furious that she now had to actually work. She then told me that she was going to report me to HR for doing this to her. Guys, she threatened to report me at a company that I no longer worked for. And sure enough, she did exactly that. 
I kept in touch with members of my old team, and they told me she was laughed out of the office. And here's where it gets absurd. Karen calls me again and again, cursing, screaming, and threatening me, and she demanded that I give her the contact information for HR at my new company, so she could report me and get me in trouble. She was going to report me to a department that had no idea who she was, nor had any jurisdiction over her complaints. The stupidity was unbelievable, and I giggled at her right up until I hung up and blocked her. Last I heard, Karen was finally fired. She got zero unemployment benefits, and she ended up moving her and her kids in with her mom. Guys, that is some crazy entitlement there. All brought to you by a crappy HR and management team, it sounds like. Like, I'm pretty sure you can fire someone for being a no-show 24 days out of the month, guys. Like, give them a warning, write them up, and then terminate them. And guys, I find it so hilarious how Karen thought she could get Opie in trouble at his new job. Some people are just so darn entitled. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the stories today. I hope you didn't shake your heads too hard. And if you missed yesterday's episode on the channel, it's an r slash petty revenge, where a Karen teacher decides to hand out detentions to kids for the most ridiculous reason ever. It's such a funny story, so go check it out if you haven't, and myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.